Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to upgrade my metallurgical microscope a bit and I thought I would share the conclusions with you. So recently I purchased two new objective lenses for my microscope. I bought them because they have a much longer working distance as the original lenses. One of the lenses is a 25 times magnification lens. This is different from the original lens because the lowest magnification lens which I have in my microscope is 5 times. But I wanted to try this lens to see if I can use it for larger subjects for example. Then the other lens is a 20 times one. I wanted to replace this lens because from 20 times uh, magnification and upwards, the original lenses have a very short working distance. And then this means that the lens has to be very close to the surface of the subject, and sometimes I just cannot go that close. For example, if I want to look at the decapsulated chip, I have to take into account that the silicon die is sitting in the bottom of a small pit in the package. And if this pit is too narrow and too deep, then I cannot focus on the specimen without uh, the tube hitting the package. So the lenses are directly compatible with my microscope. Uh, they use the standard RMS 20.2mm threads, so all I need to do is to unscrew the old lenses and screw the new ones into the rotating turret of the microscope. The new lenses are a bit bulkier, so their diameter is larger than the diameter of the old ones, but uh, this is not a problem. For this demonstration, I kept the old 20 times lens in the turret as well, so I can directly compare the performance of this lens to the new lens. And I replaced the old 5 times lens with the new 2.5 times lens. So for this magnification, I won't have any comparison. I will just look at the image produced by the 2.5 times lens. So for fun, I show you the position of the three lenses relative to the specimen when the surface is in focus. As I showed recently, I will use a chip in its uh, original package as the subject. And as you can see, for the 2.5 times lens, the subject is a few centimeters away from the lens. And actually this is much higher than the advertised 11.2 millimeters working distance, so I don't really know what is happening here. And to make it funnier, I cannot use this lens if I want to look at the specimen through the eyepieces. So if I would use the eyepieces to bring the image into focus, I would need to move the microscope further high up. But uh, that is kind of impossible, because the microscope simply hits the end of the z-axis. So this probably has something to do with the rest of the optical elements in the microscope. And when I look at the other lens, uh, the 20x1, the working distance seems to match the advertised 10.4mm, or at least it is much closer to it than with the other lens. I could not put my ruler uh, close enough, so please trust me with this one, but uh, the distance is roughly uh, 10 millimeters. If I would switch to the eyepieces, uh, then I would need to move the microscope up a little bit, but maybe just a few millimeters. So I'm still confused about the 2.5 times lens. So if anyone among the viewers know why, uh, please let me know in the comments, otherwise I will just have to figure it out myself. But now let's switch to the old uh, 20 times lens and uh, see how close I need to get to the surface in order to get a properly focused image. So as you can see, the body of the lens nearly touches the package of the chip. This is where the long working distance comes in handy. If you look at the lens from another perspective, it probably looks even more drastic. Furthermore, just as a side note, I could not move my 40 times lens here, because it has such a short working distance that it would definitely hit either the package or maybe the bond wires in the package. So probably the next investment will be a long working distance lens in this range of magnification. So enough introduction. Let's see how the microscope performs with the new lenses. Let's start with the 2.5 lens first. So just as a reminder, with this lens we have a few centimeters of gap between the subject and the lens. As you can see, the image quality is not the best here. I tried to adjust the focus as much as possible, but it was still not enough. The image towards the edges are distorted. However, this is not 100% due to the lens. It could be that the surface of the chip was not perfectly flat, thus I could not focus the whole surface due to the narrow depth of field. I tried another chip that produced better results, but it was still not 100% perfect. It is not the lens's fault, but it is not trivial to ensure a flat surface with these components. So I must come up with something later on. Also I tried to look at the transistor, but this was also a bit disappointing. The illumination of the subject was quite poor, and I think that this is due to the fact that the lens is so far away from the subject that the reflected light from the surface of the specimen gets uh, too much scattered and not all the light reaches the lens. But this is just a guess based on the poor contrast of the image. But now uh, let's switch to the 20 times lenses. And uh, first I show you a reference image with the old lens. And as you can see the wall image is in focus. 
so that's nice. Uh, since the field of view is relatively narrow here, a little deviation in flatness will not show up on the image. Uh, the only negative thing I could highlight here is that at the top left corner there is vignetting. And initially I thought that this is due to the dodgy setup that I used to attach the camera to the microscope, but it is not, because as we will see it on the next image, there is no vignetting. So this is the image of the new lens. There are multiple noticeable things here. So first, there is no vignetting. And now I am sure that this is caused by the lens and not the dodgy setup, because if there was something else in the rest of the optical system, then it should show up on this picture as well, due to the next difference that I want to highlight which is the larger field of view. So this lens covers a bit larger area than the previous one. And of course this is nice, but on the other hand, now I need to calibrate my micron scale that I usually put on my microscopy videos again, because this 20 times magnification is slightly different than the other 20 times magnification. And then the third thing uh, is the color. In my opinion, this new 20 times lens has a bit better defined colors and produces a slightly sharper image. And uh, just to show this to you, here I put the two images uh, side by side, so you can decide yourself which one is better, but uh, I lean towards the new lens. And then I also looked at uh, this transistor, and the first image I am showing you is taken with the original lens. Uh, the vignetting is still there. Also please neglect the fact that the image is partially out of focus. This is a tiny transistor, and I could not make it uh, to sit uh, perfectly flat, so that's why it is partially out of focus. When I take pictures of these things, I just simply take a series of images focusing at different portions of the image, and then I stack them together in Photoshop, so I can get rid of this, and uh, then I have a perfect edge-to-edge -edge focused image. So of course, uh, when I take pictures with focus stacking, I can uh, avoid these kind of things, but it shows up in the video. And if I switch to the new lens, it produces a very similar image, uh, roughly the same colors, a bit larger field of view, and of course it is also partially out of focus due to the fact that the subject is not laying 100% flat. But there is no vignetting. And uh, here you can see the two images side by side, so you can compare their quality again. And while you are inspecting the differences, I want to remind you that I wrote an article about this topic, and it can be found on my website. I put the link in the description of this video, so please check it. And I also added more pictures there, especially focusing on the comparison of the two 20 times lenses. And finally, here is another detail from a chip. First, I show you the old 20 times lens, same optical defects as before, and you can also see a shadow at the top right corner of the picture, but that one is just the shadow of a bond wire, so it is not a defect. The image is still quite good in my eyes, but uh, let's uh, check the other lens as well. So this one looks a bit more vibrant and uh, the larger field of view is immediately noticeable for me, especially because on the right side of the image we can actually see the edge of the silicon die. There is the edge, the serrated edge, and then that black uh, band is basically just behind the silicon die. And the image is sharp and we can see the shadow of the bond wire a bit more on the top right corner. And as usual, here is a side-by-side -side picture, so you can decide which one is better. So actually this is all I wanted to share in this video. After comparing the two 20 times lenses, I can say that the new lens is not only better because of the better overall image quality, but the handling of the microscope is also better due to the longer working distance. Regarding the 2.5 times lens, I'm still not 100% convinced, but I will try to find some way to improve the flatness of the specimen and get hopefully better images. And once again, please visit my website for additional information, and if you find my videos interesting, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I hope that this video was useful, and I hope you learned something. See you in the next video.